if I was stranded on a desert island and for some weird reason I had to make a digital product, like these would be the tools like I would go to. Um, Heap's been on that list for like a long, long time. So my name is Joe Pfeiffer. Um, I'm the VP of product at Northwestern Mutual. We build uh, the consumer products for Northwestern Mutual, which is, it's our client website that you log into and you know can follow your financial plan or engage with all the um, NM products you have. And then we also have uh, two mobile apps, one for iOS and the App Store and another for Google Play. You know, prior to using a, a, a feature like auto capture, we had to just be very diligent about tagging stuff and making sure that we proactively in advance um, thought of what we wanted to track um, and, and had that set up. And I think even the best, um, you know, the, the most proactive and most on top of it PM, you know, at some point they'll forget to, to tag it or put it in the ticket. Um, it, it has been a saving grace, I think, for us to uh, when when somebody calls out that something's not working or we come up with a new metric that we want to track or a new, um, a, you know, a feature that maybe launched months ago, the fact that we can go in and then retroactively get all of that information um, has been just really advantageous. I think anybody in product, you know, uh, has probably experienced like a very opinionated stakeholder at, at some point in time. We had an example uh, probably about a year and a half ago where um, we had a, a relatively new application. It wasn't a super complex feature. It wasn't like super difficult, but um, as soon as it launched, we very quickly were tracking it and heaped to see how many people actually used it. And so uh, we, we um, very casually and friendly reminded this person, you know, every week that, hey, only 1%, 2% of users are actually using this feature. So what we did is instead of making it an isolated like settings type variable, we actually built it into the core application as the default um, for everybody to use, which effectively made it 100% adoption. And so um, it became more of an opt-out than an opt-in. And that actually drove the adoption to 100%. And it did actually start to get people to use the application when they realized that that, that functionality was there. Um, and then that just makes us, um, I think, a little bit um, friendlier internally, or like it kind of reduces the political sodium of like working on a product team um, so that that these people feel like they can contribute their ideas but they know that there's there's accountability I guess that comes with that and it's not just like you know bark orders at a product team and go have them build something you know when I when I hear about um, making data-driven decisions which is a very like it's up there with digital transformation like I kind of roll my eyes at some of the buzzword stuff but when I can actually use a tool or my team you know can use a tool and actually say hey like you know uh Mr. Executive or Mr. Consultant or whoever it is that's saying like how are you making data-driven decision making and then I can just like produce a bunch of data and say hey we made a decision based on this data we've now kind of gotten into this era where we can actually capture all data um, and so I think by doing that we um, you know that certainly has helped my personal career or my team or I just feel I mean I just like sleep better at night knowing that I can actually make data-driven decision-making